not San Francisco, not Los Angeles, not Moscow, not Paris, but Jerusalem would be at the heart of end-time events. And in the darkest of times, God sent hope to Israel. God sent the people of Israel someone who could protect and guide them on his behalf. That is the Archangel Michael as the protector of Israel. Not only in the Bible, but even in the present, every time Israel faces difficulties, in one way or another, God still shows that he is with his people. And these signs now help Israel become stronger in the midst of conflict. Join us in watching this video until the end to see the love that God has for Israel. Please join us in praying so that we can all live in God's arms. God sent angel to protect Israel. Despite some 2,500 years of scattering and persecution, the people of Israel have survived. Furious attempts to annihilate these people have all failed. From the Babylonians to Queen Isabella to Hitler, their plans to totally exterminate the Jews failed. The fact that the Jews have survived whilst many other nations have disappeared points to their protection over the ages. In fact, in recent years, God has actually restored the nation of Israel and blessed her. In just 100 years, the Jewish population of Israel has risen an amazing 7,700% through mass Jewish immigration. Israel is the epicenter of the difficulties of our times, but it should be noted that God has never abandoned his promised land. Israel has been blessed by God as a chosen people, so he gives an angle to protect his people. Michael is an archangel, a pure spirit, created by God and sent as a messenger of importance to humanity. Eyewitnesses report seeing a celestial vision above the Israeli armored vehicles. This event, which resembled a swarm of angels, energized Israeli troops while inspiring fear and awe in their Arab foes. It appeared to be a divine shield. Many analysts and believers see this unprecedented event as a sign of divine intervention, protecting Israel at a critical point. It emphasizes the perseverance of the Israeli people, as well as the complexities of geopolitical relations in the Middle East during this turbulent period. Back to the history. When the Jewish state was born in May 1948, five Arab armies, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and Iraq, immediately invaded Israel. Arab rulers thought they were heading towards an easy victory. They had no difficulty obtaining all the arms they needed. Israel was thought to be a virtually defenseless link. But they were wrong. The Arab armies suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of a combination of Jewish militias. Of course, we must acknowledge Israel's strength and perseverance, but this must have involved God's intervention. In the Six-Day War in 1967, the armies of Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon, and later Iraq, again attacked Israel. Their goal was to wipe Israel off the map. The Arab armies had huge superiority in armor, aircraft, and troops. In light of this, Israel resolved to make a preemptive strike aimed at destroying the Arab air forces on the ground, Link. After the war, Israel held the Sinai, the Golan Heights, Gaza, the West Bank, and, for the first time in 2,500 years, all of Jerusalem. As in the 1948 war, this rapid military defeat of the Arab armies is attributed in part to the lack of coordination among Arab states. Bible scholars see the defeat as God preparing the way for Christ's millennial rule from Jerusalem. In October 1973, Hoping to win back territory lost to Israel in 1967, Egyptian and Syrian forces launched a coordinated attack against Israel on Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. For Jews, Yom Kippur, or Day of Atonement, is a solemn time of rest, prayer, and fasting, a time of sincere reflection on the state of one's relationship, or at one meant with God. Link. So this attack came at a time when Israel was resting and looking to God. With the element of surprise to their advantage, Egyptian forces successfully crossed the Suez Canal, suffering only a fraction of the anticipated casualties, while Syrian forces were able to launch their offensive against Israeli positions and break through to the Golan Heights. 
But despite the surprise and consequent heavy losses, Israel, with urgent U.S. help, once again defeated the attack, Link. It seems the God of Israel once more helped Israel, this time when they were unprepared. In early December 2016, a strange storm cloud has dust and rain put a barrier between Israel and ISIS. Reports say the storm stopped on the border of Syria and was unable to enter Israel's Golan Heights area. Many believe God intervened on behalf of Israel to prevent ISIS from entering Israel. Future Example of God's Protection The imminent Gog-Magog war against Israel will demonstrate to the world that God still protects His people Israel. When Russian-led Islamic armies came against Israel from the north, God promised to help Israel. But you know what? Protection is sometimes conditional. When the nation of Israel walked away from their God and protector, these promises seemed not to apply, and Israel was scattered throughout the nations for some 2,500 years. The scenario is similar today. Most of the 8 million inhabitants of Israel do not recognize Jesus as their promised Messiah. So, according to prophecy, in the near future it seems Israel will go through a time of great trouble. It will be a time of the refining of Israel until they recognize their true Messiah. What important message or task did God give to Michael? To answer that, we must first look at St. Michael's appearance in sacred scripture. The first mention of the Holy Archangel does not appear until the book of Daniel. In it, the prophet has a vision of an angelic being who is identified as the Archangel Gabriel. And I lifted up my eyes, and I saw, and behold a man clothed in linen, and his loins were girded with the finest gold. Then Gabriel reveals to Daniel the spiritual resistance he experienced while trying to convince the Persian king Cyrus to let the Jewish people return to Israel. But the prince of the kingdom of the Persians resisted me one and twenty days, and behold Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there by the king of the Persians. In some translations, the word prince is replaced by the word angel, indicating the spiritual battle that was going on. Gabriel was unable to complete the task on his own and so enlisted the help of Michael. Later in Daniel, the holy archangel returns, this time in a prophetic vision of the end of the world, which is mentioned in Daniel 12.1. This is the first time we see Michael as one who protects the people of Israel, saving them from their enemies. His name is never mentioned again in the Old Testament, and we do not see his presence directly until the letter of St. Jude. There he is referenced in connection to an event that occurred immediately after Moses' death. The dispute was a Jewish tradition that was passed down through the centuries where Michael is seen as a protector of the body of Moses. Michael's most memorable appearance in the Bible is in the book of Revelation, where he is seen as the head of a heavenly army, casting a great dragon down to earth. This is described detail in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. This is probably the most powerful view of Michael, showing him as a forceful warrior able to strike Satan down casting the evil serpent out of heaven once and for all. Based on these scripture passages, it appears that Michael was sent to earth as a protector and warrior. He has the power to defeat Satan and can help protect us from our spiritual enemies. Yet, that is not the end of the story. Saint Michael will continue his mission of being present and protecting his people in general and the people of Israel in particular. The protector of the people of God was the cry of the great archangel when he smote the rebel Lucifer in the conflict of the heavenly hosts. From that hour, he has been known as Michael, captain of the armies of God, the archetype of divine fortitude, the champion of every faithful soul in strife with the powers of evil. What is more, we see him in Holy Scripture as the special guardian of the children of Israel their comfort and protector in times of sorrow or conflict. It is he who prepares their return from the Persian captivity when the prophet Daniel prays for that favor. 
who leads the valiant Maccabees to victory in battle after the prayer of Judas Maccabeus. Ever since its foundation by Jesus Christ, the Church has venerated St. Michael as her special patron and protector. She invokes him by name in her Confiteor when accusing her faults. She summons him to the side of her children in the agony of death and chooses him as their escort from the chastening flames of purgatory to the realms of holy light. Lastly, when Antichrist shall have set up his kingdom on earth, it is Michael who will unfurl once more the standard of the cross. This we know from a prophecy of scripture which states clearly that in those days the great Prince Michael will rise up to protect the children of God. During the plague in Rome in the 6th century, Pope Gregory the Great saw Saint Michael in a vision sheathing his flaming sword to show that he would put an end to the scourge which was ravaging the city. In 608, a church was erected in thanksgiving to Saint Michael for the help he gave. God's angels are watching over us. Many believe that angels are still among us. Their very name, Angel, means messenger. And we can be assured that when they're here, they have come for a very specific purpose. For throughout history, angels have been sent by God to bring a message of hope, to protect, comfort, serve, carry out His judgment, and to give Him praise. There are people who have had encounters with angels in our world even today. Maybe some are aware of these angelic meetings. Maybe others have no idea they've walked or possibly talked with an angel. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Indeed, God offers his pure and selfless love through the use of his angels. God commands many angels to guard us. God commands those faithful spirits who are nearest to him, who come from him and are marked by him, to guard us in all our ways. God's promise through the psalmist to Jesus applies to us as well. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. It is here that the Lord promises the Israelites that they would be guided and kept in their way through the wilderness to the promised land of Canaan. This was no ordinary angel either. This was the angel of the Lord an Old Testament manifestation of Christ himself. Angels are sent by God to protect us and help us inherit his full kingdom. The Bible tells us that angels are his servants, carrying out his will and work for our good. We know from this verse from Hebrews that angels are ministering spirits, sent to serve those who are going to receive salvation. By definition, salvation is deliverance from sin and its consequences brought about by faith in Jesus Christ. Having celebrated God's mercy to his people, the psalmist praises God's excellent majesty and universal dominion. The psalmist acknowledges God's angels who do his bidding, intervene and protect on his behalf, and are obedient to his word. We are called in this verse to be hospitable or friendly to those we don't know. The Bible tells us that some have entertained or hosted messengers of God unaware, when we meet strangers, we should be careful how we treat them because it could be someone that was sent by God to help us or protect us. We don't know what God is trying to do or what He is trying to accomplish, but we know that it is a part of His good and perfect will. We know that there are millions of angels encircling God's throne and glorifying the Lord. We see a different side of angels here, discovering they are more than protectors, but also powerful glorifiers of the Lord. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we can be confident that He still works in the same powerful ways, for He never changes. Satan, the enemy intends evil, but God promises good. According to Scripture, Satan himself was the highest of all angels in heaven. But because of his great pride, desiring to be worshipped and set up above God, he was thrown out, and he took one-third of the angels with him, these are the demonic, dark, spiritual forces we're up against today, and you can be assured that the enemy knows how to disguise himself as an angel. His whole intent is to lead us into traps of destruction and to draw our worship away from God. Live aware. Don't be easily deceived. God promises to help us as we seek to honor Him and walk wisely in this life. 
we can trust that even when we're unaware of our needs or impending disasters that lay before us, God knows the way. He is at work, sending words of hope, protecting His children, attending to our needs, bringing justice and mercy to our land, drawing us closer to Himself, and encouraging us to walk wisely, be aware, and live fully for Him. He often works in ways we can't fully see, sometimes behind the scenes or with unexpected timing. Yet He's always working on our behalf. Whether we realize it or not, there's a spiritual realm constantly around us. May God give us eyes to see clearly that angels are among us and that God is working miracles, even today. God appearing in angelic form. Some people believe that the angel from this passage represents God himself, appearing in angelic form. The angel speaks as God, such as when the angel declares in Exodus 33:19 that I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. The identity of the presence that went with the children of Israel is both the Lord and the angel of God. This angel was definitely a cut above ordinary angels, for God's very name was in him. Also, he could forgive sins, and who can forgive sins but God alone? The angel of the Lord was personally guiding the Israelites from Egypt to the Promised Land. The fact that the angel appeared in a glorious cloud is also a clue that he is the angel of the Lord, who many Christians believe is Jesus Christ appearing prior to his incarnation later in history. In the Old Testament, God manifested his presence by a visible glowing cloud signifying his glory. Israel was led by a pillar of fire and a cloud. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ was often accompanied by the same type of cloud. Revelation 1-7 says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. Jesus was clothed in a cloud like this, the last time the Apostle John saw him ascend into heaven. And John heard the angels who spoke with the apostles say that Jesus would return in like manner. Jeremiah writes in what the Bible says about angels. It seems highly possible that in the Old Testament, Christ came to earth in the form of an angel, the greatest angel. An angelic reminder of God's faithfulness. No matter who the angel is, Michael or anyone else, he still serves as a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness to believers. The angel here continues his redemptive role from the beginning of God's redemptive work in Israel. Regardless of the mystery surrounding his precise identity, and despite the fact that he is not frequently mentioned in Exodus, he is no doubt a central figure in Israel's redemption. And when we keep in mind the virtual equation of the angel and Yahweh, it follows that the angel's presence is an indication of God's presence with his people from beginning to end. His appearance here reminds Israel of God's faithfulness. In the book of Daniel, we witness Michael's role as he comes to the aid of Israel during the Persian captivity. When the prophet Daniel prays for help, it is Michael who assists and ensures their return from captivity. Furthermore, a prophecy foretells that during challenging times, the great prince Michael will rise to protect the children of God. These biblical accounts showcase Archangel Michael as a powerful guardian and protector of Israel, offering divine assistance and safeguarding the nation in times of need, reinforcing the deep connection between the Archangel and the chosen people. Archangel Michael is absolutely wonderful. Imagine a best friend who could stand beside you and love you enough to protect you from the dark energies of others. Humans can be bullies, sometimes, at work, at home, even within holy places. Every time I've called upon Archangel Michael to give me strength or to merely talk with him about how to handle a situation, he has always been there. He is not only a powerful angel well-versed in how to slay the darkness, but he is also the best friend next to God that you could ever have. Whenever you need guidance or assurance of strength in facing one of life's dilemmas, call upon him. He will hear and answer your call.